to another episode of Channel Control, where we may do a ASMR episode. The gang's all here. That wasn't ASMR. Oh, don't worry. Ask me. Don't worry. Not any. Oh. Don't worry about it. I don't know what it is. Hi, Hi BC. Hey, what's up? I'm in the t- Channel Control. I'm here. I'm in the studio. I'm actually here. You haven't been here. World what? Heavyweight Champion. Actually here. He hasn't been here this whole time. Mm, hasn't been here. Not one Not time. Not once. I just thought you were like really quiet. Well, I am. I am very quiet. I'm a quiet person. I don't really talk much, you know. I just feel that, you know, talking is sometimes overrated. So I feel that I shouldn't always be saying things. So I just don't really talk that much. I don't ever have that much to say, you know. I don't need to tell everybody that you can find me on social media at RealJackassBC, R-E-L-J-C-K-A-S-S-B-C. That works on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I am the ETCW World Heavyweight Champion of the world. Not the city, but the world. And, you know, it's just things like that. Like, you know, I try to get on my YouTube. I try to do things, and I don't ever say anything because I just have a YouTube channel that no one ever watches, and I don't even watch it, but I have and I keep doing things, but I don't say anything. because talking We've also bad. got Matt on the show. <laughs> He's very modest. He's very, He's very unbelievably modest. modest. I don't, yeah. Like, I don't so know why you haven't been saying all this stuff this entire time that we've been doing this well, show in 2019. I not really say anything because I'm pretty quiet and I don't really talk That's much true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But yes, welcome to an all new episode of Channel Control. And I guess like, yeah, I guess it does feel different because I am being sandwiched again and I haven't felt that feeling of claustrophobia in a long time. Well, get used to it. Well, actually you should have to. Yeah. I mean, it's just one week. He'll be, yeah, he, he'll, he'll, he'll be in, like, Kuala Lumpur next week. Sure. I was, he I, will not know. Okay, don't... <laughs> he's not going to go internationally, okay? He's going to be in, like, L.A. or New York. Those are, like, the two places. It's, like, L.A., New York. He oh, hey, WrestleMania's in New York? Oh, I'm going to go back to New York. He went to U.K.? I went to London, bro. You went, yeah. I challenged the Queen. Okay. All right? You went to London, and you came back saying... Fuck this. I never want to go back to London again or overseas ever again. I do not ever want to go again. But I will say that I did challenge the queen. I was going to – I put the title up. I said, hey, the championship for the throne, she was too afraid. Don't or lie. She, or she was she not She super home. kicked you. She super kicked you in the face. One, two, three. I, I wouldn't have the title if that was and, well, and then they threw you out with the title because she's like, I don't need this mess. And she relinquished the title. This is the World Heavyweight Championship. I know. She but would, she yeah, is she the would, queen of England. She, she would definitely want to add this to her titles, okay? I Everyone think she's would. too good for uh, it. Unfortunately, she was actually just not home. So That's I was kind of just yelling at a palace. But... <laughs> You sure you weren't yelling at Buckingham, the guards? And, and some guard in a funny-looking hat? Yo, real talk. <laughs> so people are like, yeah, in London, we don't have guns. And I'm all like... Bro, go to the palace. <laughs> they got guns. They got guns. <laughs> <laughs> they got guns. <laughs> They're not like cops walking around with guns holstered. They are like AK-47. Yeah, yeah. Up. I'm like, God. Also, I like your British accent. That was terrible. Uh, excuse me. I am part of the Rabbit Empire. Yeah, I am, it was terrible. I am Sir Jackass. Okay. Yeah, let's do it the again. Prize. Let's do it pip, again. Pip, pip, chettio. Sport of tea, Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Bond. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my god, Nigel is cringing right now. Somewhere he's going around like, oh, BC just did a really bad accent. I did a great accent. You're just, you're just mad. And if you are from the UK or anywhere overseas and you hated that accent, send all hate mail to R-E-A-L, A-C-K-S-S-B-C. And uh, at Ryan Remington RR. Yeah. Don't, don't plug his Twitter. Do not plug at Ryan Remington RR. Do not follow Ryan Remington RR. I have noticed that ever since you started hating him, that, like, or I guess maybe he betrayed you. I don't know what happened. He attacked I wasn't there. me in the he middle of my match. Wow. For no reason. Okay, he all right. He wasn't even involved. I was about to spear the crap out of Angel Omega. Here comes Ryan. Hits me. Knocks out Omega. Hits me with his sun kiss DDT. And then he's like, I'm, join- I'm joining the Texas Rumble. But you could have said that after the match. You You didn't have to attack me to say that. I had nothing to do with it. I'm not even in the rumble. That's really odd that he would just decide to attack you during that. I know. Especially after you've been his biggest, like, you know, advocate. Exactly. For for his social media. What what you should do is join this rumble now just to beat his ass. Ooh, no, I hate the rumble. (laughs) (laughs) You should go in and win the rumble. 
Ooh, that's there's a lot of people. That means I have to be in there for a long time. Just be number thirty and go in there. Yeah, and be the, there's yeah. still when you go in thirty. There's a bunch of people. And there's a lot of work in but there. You're I like, can't tag out. You're like the Braun Strowman. You know, you come in and you're like, you're that's like, not at down. all what I am. No, you're, I, you're I, a I big kinda, dude. Yeah, do, yeah, do, do what Braun Strowman did in the Royal Rumble. Just go out the middle ring and sit out there for the yeah, for like see, a half an hour go. and step back in. Hang out with commentary guys. And just sit there on commentary while everyone else is being like eliminated. Come back in when there's only four left, and then boom, knock them all out, and you win the whole thing, and you're going to WrestleMania. I, I don't think that's how that works. I think isn't that. That's that's not, that checks out, right? That's, that checks out. Yeah, that would be the greatest gimmick. You 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 get out the ring, you go to the audience. Sit down, pull out a juice box. Yeah! <laughs> go that. Get it, go to the concession stand, Palmer, you get some nachos. Palmer did that once. He goes, gets popcorn, and then just sits and eats popcorn. Dinner. Well, Palmer's a genius, and you should take a page out of his book. <laughs> okay. Should we talk about television? I yeah, thought we were. That's what we were going to We weren't do. talking about television no, this whole we weren't. time? We were talking about wrestling, which is on television. It's on television. But his wrestling, which is not on television. That's not true. It's on you television. Can, you, can, you can find MPX Wrestling at network.mpxwrestling.com. And it's only $9.99 a month. But guess what? You can get a discount, Rob. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. All you have to do is enter promo code JACKASS1. J-A-C-K-A dollar sign dollar sign one. And you can get $5 off your monthly subscription. Please tell me you didn't make that promo code. I did not. Okay. Because why would you do dollar oh, sign, man. dollar sign? I have no he idea. Used, he like, used to be the, the S man. works, though. Like, that doesn't make sense. I know. You should, they should just use the S. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why it's a dollar sign. That makes no sense. Mm. I don't. Uh, but you can still go do it. But you can get it for <laughs> Jackass One. J A C K A S. Also, you can watch. You can listen to Jackass One. You can listen yeah, to Jackass One on the last Monday of every every month. We yeah. talk Star Wars. Yeah. All right. Okay. So our first about? TV story. <laughs> Denai Guerrero Guerrero is leaving The Walking Dead. And this is... It is like a mass exodus of people. The woman that played Michonne... Ah, Michonne! Is... Season 10 will be her last season of The Walking Dead. They say that she will be in episodes very sparingly until she just says goodbye. She got that Marvel money and then her bae left and she's like, Peace! Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what happened. She was like, I have to go find the Black Panther. Wakanda forever. Hey, hey, you can't well, I mean, that. to be nice fair, I can do Wakanda forever. Yeah, that's right. You married to a black woman. That's okay. It's true. Right. To be <laughs> fair, T'Challa's gone. Like, we don't know where he is, so she has other stuff she has to do. She does. Yeah, she has to run a whole country by herself. Exactly. Pretty much. So, uh, Walking Dead. I'm saying right now they should like redo this show. If not, just take it off. Redo the show where they're telling like stories of people during that time period. Which is kind of like Fear of the Walking Dead, but I mean, the, most most of the most of the major stars are gone. I really don't want to see a show based around Carol and Daryl. Yeah, and that seems like what we have uh, they've decided to turn toward, especially since they've already greenlit the next season, which is just crazy that you would do that mm-hmm. after you lose Andrew Lincoln, you lose uh, Maggie, and I can't remember her her name. Uh, the actress's name, and now you're losing Denai Guerrera. Mm-hmm. Like that, who do you have left? You have Daryl and you have Carol, and that's it. You know, and I guess whoever else you yeah, want to try think, and like bring up, uh, you know. I think those are the last two original characters. Left. Yeah, and it's an, and it's two weird. characters who who in the comic, I think. Well, Daryl never existed, and Carol died in the prison. She she killed herself. Yeah, yeah. So. Everyone's gone. Yeah, and and not to mention you have Carl who's gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like all of this is just so weird that now we're gonna run a whole show behind these two characters, and we, we have another season to look forward to. It would not surprise me if AMC looks at their ratings by the I guess the beginning of next season, and they're like, "Wow, these are really down." Because after every like season premiere, or season finale of The Walking Dead, like. It was almost like clockwork. The next day, you saw the ratings, and they were like freaking high as oh, all hell. The roof, yeah. Yeah, it. This would probably be the lowest that that the ratings are going to be for this show, and it wouldn't surprise me if AMC is like, okay, this yeah. is your last season. So, this yeah, is yeah, now this, the final this, season. This is it for you guys. I mean, Fear the Walking Dead. I liked the first season. Second season, kind of, eh, drug on for yeah. me. But 
a couple of months ago, I went through and I watched everything up until the, the current season where Morgan from Walking Dead went over there. It's honestly a really good show. Morgan being there is like his story is kind of eh, but everyone else is good. Yeah. There's people you don't know. So you can do whatever you want with them. You don't have people like me going, well, in the comic book, they did No, these are new people. Yeah, so, right, right, right. Leave it alone. Um, I, I just, I've never been able to get into The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. I, I just, That's fine. When it, when it first started, I was so over and done with zombies already. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, I cannot do this. And then as time went on, people who watched it, I felt were watching it to hate watch it. Like, they wanted to watch it so they could talk trash about it. Like, that's like most people I know, that's yeah. why they watch right. The Walking Dead. Oh, you watch a bunch of hateful people. That's true. That's <laughs> true. So, a bunch yeah. of hateful people. So, when, when, you know, people slowly started leaving the show, it kind of seemed to make sense. Like, I felt like, even, again, as someone who didn't watch it, I felt like they, they jumbled the whole Negan thing. Because everyone mm. seemed very disappointed. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. They, they definitely did that. So, I, I, it makes sense that they're finally starting to go, look, y'all don't... And from what I understand, the, the writers have never had an ending in mind. No. They just kind of keep, no, keep going. And so, it makes sense that people are finally like, look, I don't... There's no arc. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I'm, I'm done. I'm leaving. Wakanda forever. Yeah. Well, well, then, well right now, they're yeah. kind of keeping up with the comic book series, and they're getting into the Whisperers, which are the people who are wearing the skins of, of zombies. And they, they travel with zombies, direct them, and things like that. And that's where they're going. So, saying that they have no end in sight, maybe, but they're trying to go They have with, at least an arc. Yeah, they, they, they have the, the comic series to go along yeah. with. And they use so, the major villains. Like, what you're saying, though, about how, like, it's really just kind of, I guess, a controlled chaos, like... Mm-hmm. And people, like, hate watch it. Like, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I stopped watching it. Because it's it's one of those shows that you... Whenever I saw that it was on my DVR, I would turn it on. But, like, I would almost have to, like, I guess prepare myself in a way. Because, like, I didn't really care anymore. You know? Yeah. Like, I went five or so seasons, whatever. I don't even remember where I ended off on. And I was, like... I just had to, like, mentally prepare myself because it was such a grind to get through. I knew there were going to be slow parts. I knew there were going to be some parts where, yeah, there's like a lot of action, a lot of fun that we're going to be, you know, into. But there's always going to be those slow parts where I just, mm, just kind of don't care. <laughs> so I kind of got out of it because, yeah, there just never seemed to be an end game in sight, yeah. ever. And so I'm like, well, why am I wasting my time with this? And then, yeah, the whole Negan thing was awful. Like, when Negan was first, like, introduced, I was like, holy crap, this is going to be amazing. And then you don't have Jeffrey Dean Morgan on for like the next four episodes, and you're like, I don't care. <laughs> like, bring me Jeffrey Dean Morgan. And it's just the whole thing was all bungled anyway. All right. Yeah. Well, the Walking Dead, uh, we, we're not happy with what's going on. They should end. It's it. just confusing. They the should. whole thing is confusing that AMC would even green light a product when you lose your main characters, well, and then well, you're just ultimately like, After whatever. she said she was going? Or, or no, like before. before. They, before, they, they, okay, they so green light before. Known, they were like, yeah. what the hell? Probably. <laughs> but I feel like with the, if you're looking at a show like this, you have to look at how Dene Guerrero's star is on the rise. And you have to think to yourself... How much longer is she going to be here? Mm-hmm. So they had to see this coming. Yeah. Stories about women. It's 2019. It's okay. And they're still not getting paid to write them out. But they're about to. It I feel like 2019 is going to be Claire Foy, that, yeah. that there's been a pay gap uh, controversy with The Crown, where Claire Foy is getting paid less than Matt Smith. Which is insane. Show. She's playing <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. Sense. But, but their reasoning behind it was... Well, she doesn't have that much acting experience, and Matt Smith has done Doctor Who, so she's got a bit more experience, and blah, 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 and so on. So, you know, it's all about how much experience he has Shut up. over her. <laughs> like, that's insane. She is the main character. The show is about her character, and she plays, a, she does a masterful performance every single episode. And she gets paid less than Matt Smith, who's kind of on the on the show, like, I don't know, like every other episode. Like, that's just mind-boggling to me. I don't understand that at all. It, it's not the first time women are being paid less than... Leading women are being paid less than male supporting actors in movies right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, or, I mean, the only thing that this has done is this forced Netflix to go to all their companies and say, start asking, how much are people getting paid? How much is this actor getting paid? How much is this lead 
female act- actress getting paid compared to everyone else here. I, I do like the aspect of Netflix going in and yes. being like, okay, yes. let's double check this. But to play the devil's advocate of it here, Matt Smith is more of a draw than Claire Foy is at the at the moment. Now, when when the contract is up and it's time to renegotiate, yes, she needs to start getting more. But it's just like uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans didn't get paid jack squat for the Avengers. He was getting paid like five hundred thousand dollars. Which is why when negotiations came up again, Robert Downey Jr. was like, y'all are going to pay Chris Evans now what you're paying me. Because now he is one of your names. You have made him a name. Now you have to pay him like that. And I think that's something that could happen with Claire Foy now. Because again, she, she has like two, maybe three other credits to her name. One of which was one of my favorite movies of the year, Unsane. I think she was incredible in that. Uh, she was incredible in First Man too. Uh, yeah, again, first man now, too. Mm-hmm. So she's she's getting that clout now, so she can go in there and go, oh, oh, y'all want another season? Hey, um, we're going to up my freaking pay now. You, you know, know I, I understand mm-hmm. it from that aspect of, like, when it first started, you know, Claire Foy wasn't a household mm-hmm. name. Totally understand. Are you going to pay her a million, or are you going to pay Matt Smith, who is a household name, to a certain extent, two million? Like, okay, all right. But still, at that point, it just doesn't make sense that, like, you're still not going to pay your main actress, your main character, at least level paying, like, level the playing field yeah. with her, with him. Like, no one should be paid more or less if you've got two main characters and one gets paid a little bit more than the other and the, uh, the one is actually about that one that you're not paying a whole lot of. Mm-hmm. I understand the experience value. Okay. But that's still... Like, it would not surprise me, too, now, after hearing that, if David Tennant got paid more than Jessica Jones. And that's a, that's a shame. <laughs> it's an absolute shame. Yeah, I mean... You know? If, 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 you're, if you're a lead in a show, you should yes. be getting paid the most over everyone else. You should be getting paid just as much as the big name that's with you. It can also be you a know. situation where it's like, yo, we want... Claire, we want you. What, you know, what, what do you want? This is what I want. Okay, cool. We make that. Hey, we have a chance to get Matt Smith. Okay, cool. Offer him this. He wants more than that. We need him to push this show. Shit. Okay, give him the money. Sure. And you know, and right. there, there's always extenuating. That is true. Things. You are and correct. Again, I'm not advocating for right. anything. For you know, she she deserves. She is becoming one of those names mm-hmm. that she and she needs to get her money. So I agree with that that aspect mm-hmm. of that. That is actually a really good point you're making. But after the first season. And you saw what Claire Foy was mm-hmm. able to do, and how everyone loved her, and how now her name is starting to go on the rise. It's not that maybe you should lower Matt Smith. It's just that you yeah. should give her the exact same amount as Matt yeah. Smith at that point. Like bump her up now. Like okay, you did such an amazing job. You exceeded expectations. Here is this massive bonus for you. And now this isn't even an issue. Exactly. Yeah. Especially when you get the things like. You do one season like, oh, we're already greenlit for two more seasons. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to keep her pay the same. No, fuck that. Yeah. Like you said, raise her pay. Right. I mean, <laughs> so. that's that's like just exceeding expectations at that point. You've outdone your contract. It's the exact same thing in like the NFL. Whenever like, let's say Julio Jones, like he's on this contract where he's getting paid $10 million, but you know, the, the person above him isn't doing, producing nearly as much, but they're getting paid like 15 he has a season where he gets like, I don't know, 1,500 yards and like 20 touchdowns. Yeah, he's going to go after that like money after the season and be like, mm-hmm. look, we need to rework my contract. Yeah. It's the exact same thing mm-hmm. with Claire Foy. She had a 1,500-yard, 20-touchdown catch season with the crown. She now deserves that more, more money. All right. And we all agree. Pay the women what they deserve. That's right, yeah. Just, just pay people what they deserve. Yes, yes. <laughs> so... I mean, By the way, Rob, huh? I heard BC makes more money than I do on this show. I'm going to need you to give me an extra, you know, a bonus, a raise. Do you yeah. have a title belt? Not yeah. yet. Become the heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, not, not the city? Not the city. The, the world. world. Oh. I was going for the city. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Super Bowl. Good huh. game, huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You are not allowed to say those two words in our presence. Oh, really? actually, oh. also, we're not allowed to say uh, uh, the S word. We have to say the big game, CBS. Wilson. That is actually true. Oh, really? It's not CBS. It's the NFL. 
in a Okay, so yeah. the superb owl was interesting. Yeah, the superb owl was fantastic. <laughs> it was not. And the halftime of the superb owl was trash. Dude, it was it was all right. No, he it is bad. bad live. Yeah. He, like, he sounded awful without a synthesizer. Oh, and he oh, had oh, no that. charisma with the audience at all. He was, like, out there doing a job. Yeah. Yeah, it was not It weird. was so weird. I didn't realize they edit his voice so much, but he was... Mm-hmm. Those songs sound so weird live. Yeah. Also, I like how they had Travis Scott come out to do one song, Leave. And then they have Big Boy come out and do one song, get back in that that that, uh, that car you just came in on, and leave. You know what? Like, when you I was said like, really? It, I, think it was, I think it was you who said in the chat with, that, that Paperboy should have done yes. the halftime show. And then Jay chimes in with Childish Gambino. I yeah. was like, oh my god, that would have been genius. That would have been incredible. In Atlanta? Mm-hmm. All, all I have to say is that um, Freddie Mercury, deep in the throes of uh, HIV... AIDS was a better singer. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I think we can all agree that outside of that idea that we have come up with with Jay and myself and P- Chinese uh, Childish Gambino and uh, and Paperboy, I think they they honestly could have just had the last twenty minutes of Bohemian Rhapsody where he is at the <laughs> where you had that Freddie Mercury concert could have just aired that for the halftime performance and that would have been better than this. Yeah, sure in hell would have. Like, and you don't even have to like do anything on the field. We're just gonna keep the field clean. We're just gonna put it on the Titan Tron. Just put it in your homes, <laughs> and that's it. I'm. So, I probably wouldn't have watched halftime heat if that had happened. I've been like, let's just turn that off. What's happening with Freddie now? Uh, but let's talk about the good things of the big game, and one of them for me was the Twilight Zone. That was cool. Commercial yeah, that came up. That was cool. I've been waiting for. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't really call it a look. commercial. I called it an announcement. Yeah. yeah, like, hey, the Twilight Zone's coming. Well, we and already was, knew that. But. And it was so interesting how they did it. And they're like, "Welcome back to." I'm like, "Yeah." Did my TV mess up? <laughs> oh, this is something. Okay. It was a thing. It was cool. Um, I liked it. And I mean, then Jordan Peele just went. Then of course it's going to only going to be on CBS All Access if you don't have that, which we all do. I'm we gonna, all do. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch something on CBS All, all Access for the first time now. <laughs> you should be watching more than that. It is actually interesting that the horror genre and television has become such a big thing. And what's even equally as interesting is that Jordan Peele, who is a known comedian, like big in comedy, did Keel and Peele for so many years, and even did that terrible uh, Keanu movie. Ugh. Um, he left Key and Peele. They ended that show, and now he he's found a niche in like horror like he's mastered horror for some unknown reason like yeah it's crazy and i love it like you look at what uh keegan michael key has done though and he's like found a niche in like weird off color comedy but jordan peele is now just horror he's all horror all right but uh going along with the rest of the 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 big game hannah amazon put out their tv show after the game (laughs) We were, I was waiting for Netflix to do something, yeah. but the Amazon did it, and they gave I you, think, they showed you the pilot episode of Hannah. I think after last year's debacle, Netflix was like, <laughs> "Let's calm down." Like, I feel like Netflix like, knew though. Chill, like, they, I feel like Netflix was like Cloverfield Paradox. We got to put this out. This is the only way we're going to get hype before this no, movie. I think I, I think it was more of a we got them last year, guys. Let's chill this year. Right. Uh, we ain't, ain't going to get them again. No. <laughs> let's, let, let's let a year go by. They'll forget that we did that. Boom. Hit them big next year with another crappy movie. Hannah was a movie with Eric Banya and a very young uh, Saoirse Ronan. Uh, Cer- I think Cer- it's Cer- Cersei Ronan. Cersei yeah. Ronan. Cersei yeah. Ronan. Um, who played Hannah. And my favorite line from the whole movie. This, she's talking to this woman that she met on a vacation. And she talked about... Hannah's talking about her mother that died, and the woman said, "Oh, your mother died. That's so. That's so sad. How did she die? Three bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty so, good. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, okay. I, I thought it was interesting that they did it for this show, mm-hmm. and they only did the pilot episode, and they were like, it's gonna be on for twenty four hours. Yeah. Catch it, or you're gonna miss out and until March." Gone. That just seems so odd to me. Like, why are we waiting until March? Like, are we just waiting for, like, the rest of the episodes to be edited and put together or something like that? Like, Mm -hmm. I get it that it it built up hype for this show that I don't think a lot of people knew about. Because I had no idea that this was even a thing. 
Um, and I watched the first episode, and it's a it's a good setup. I mean, it's visually stunning. I think Joel Kinnaman does a great job. And the girl that they have that plays Hannah is fantastic, but that's about where it ends. Like, if you really want to pull in an audience to, like, wait till March, like, give us a better episode, or at least give us two episodes. So that way we can really be like, oh, okay, wait, what's happening? What's going to happen next? Mm-hmm. I need I need this show now. And, and you know, it's, it's not March, it's February. I need the show now. I just think it's odd that they would just decide to do this one episode and then just be like, hey, we'll wait for a month. This is weird. I mean, it doesn't I, really do much with her. I think that may, I think that makes perfect sense. Like, you know, I've I've had to be in situations with with Comic Con and whatnot where they're like, "Hey, here's episode one of the Runaways." Yeah. And then I have to wait five months till I can watch it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the fact that you got oh here's episode one now you only have to wait a month. It, it, I think it builds hype. I think it, I think it's a good marketing strategy. I think though that but that's that, if you pull from, off that first episode. But yeah, well, I think though. For you, that explanation, that example, it, it doesn't really relate to everybody else, like the common people, because like the the most of the people in the world, I mean, it's what in that th- that room watching that first episode is probably like point two percent of the population. Oh, yeah, true, obviously. So like, if that. yeah, exactly. So like, rest of the world like zero 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 one. Exactly. So <laughs> like, the rest of the world has to wait so long, and it's like you've got all these other shows that you're interested in, that you're invested in. And so by the time this season comes out on Amazon Prime, it's like, oh yeah, that's right. That's I mean, a show. Again, it's kind of it's kind of a marketing thing to to help people get excited, help people know that it's coming, people put put it in people's minds, and then when it comes back out, they're going to be like, oh oh yeah, I remember, I was excited about this after the Super Bowl. Because, you know, it was a boring game, and then I got to see this thing. <laughs> that is so true. That, that was, does help the marketing, because you know, it was a very boring game. So it kind of, it's just... It, yeah. Marketing-wise, I think it works. It's not like they're like, hey, here's one episode. You can see the rest next season, next year sometime. We don't know. Right. Uh, they're like, look, March. I just think that it would have been a better idea. Not saying don't put that out there, but give us more than what we got. Like, what is it? What it, it, It's February, so you have uh, six weeks, right? Roughly. Roughly, something like that. Well, we just it's had... Also, it's also a short month, so... Two weeks ago, we had one episode of The Gifted... And they went on break again. That's different. And now we're, you know, and we're still waiting three weeks. Fox you know, is just weird with scheduling. But that's something though. that television starts to do now. Like there was no, uh, there was no Supergirl again this week. You know, there was one last week, not one this week. That's how television. They're like, hey, here's an episode. We'll give you more when we're ready. Well, that's what NBC. <laughs> yeah. That's what NBC is doing with Superstore. That I thought was really weird. That you know they finished the se- they finished the first half of the season in like December, and now the the next part isn't going to come out till March. Like, that's just a really weird delay, and I don't understand why these guys yeah, one, do these like, delays. Once, once TV gets the, 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 this Christmas break, when it comes back, it's just this scattered shows on, because, yeah, I mean, you have things like the Super Bowl, right. the State of the Union, and other things. It's like, well, this is big, so we're not going to put our show on. Well, last, last episode, we talked about, like, Kimmy Schmidt doing the same thing, where mm-hmm. you had to wait a whole year for the next half of it, and it was just like, why did we even do this? I just don't understand why streaming services do that like look at atlanta now we're gonna wait a whole nother year now before yeah the next atlanta yeah and it's just odd to me but the but see even that that's a network show though yeah like for streaming services i feel like we got a whole like they need to be held to a higher standard because we've learned we've got we've gotten used to this lifestyle of binging everything yeah, just give me everything so <laughs> like if you're gonna do this thing where you're gonna like be like here you go here's a little bit wait for the rest of it later. It's like a drug deal thing where it's like, we're going to give you this little taste and you're going to get hooked on it and then you got to come back for the rest. Like, I don't feel like we need that. Just give us the whole thing and that'll make us happy. It would, but that's not what they're doing. I Plus know. the thing is, there's things with money and stuff like that and filming and production. But it, yes, yes. That, but that, That's what happened with... Um, my, for, but for Hannah though... Yeah. You're waiting a month. What are you doing in that month outside of maybe editing the last episode? Yeah, they could have just left it on. I do that whole 24 hours thing. That's what I'm but, saying. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I'm probably going to watch it. I yeah. don't know how good it's going to be. I love the movie. Mm-hmm. The movie was great. But as far as this TV show, they're going to spread that movie out over 10 hours. I'm fine with most. that. I'm fine with that so. because, I, I, like I said, I'm interested in it. It's just weird. 
that they decided to do this. All right. Um, okay, so after we talked about this whole uh, superb owl and everything they did with that. By the way, that's totally a Colbert Report <laughs> joke, and I loved it. Like I, whenever he was trying to do the superb the the Super Bowl coverage during like. Whenever they were in New York the last time, he was like, it's the superb owl. And I was like, this is so great. They did owl facts. It was great. <laughs> All right. So now let's get into our superhero rundown starring BC. I watched a lot of superhero shows. I was gone all, all of January, so I had to catch up on everything. It was very rough. I'm sure. To rewatch, to That's get hard. through everything <laughs> that, so quickly. That many commercials, too? Uh, you're watching on CW? Oh, yeah. So they just want to blend in some episodes, maybe? Some yeah. of them. Um, uh, you know, everything's been, I've been... I'm really enjoying everything. There's not any single show that I'm not liking. I heard Supergirl has been not great. Though. I've enjoyed it. I, I love. I, I like it. Really? Yeah, I thought I Jay hated it. it. Jay I hates everything. Jay, hate, Jay hates everything. <laughs> Shout out to Jay Washington. Find him on Twitter. <laughs> Mr. Jay Washington. M-R-J-A-Y. You should know how to spell really? Washington. Yeah. <laughs> he, I, I love when he says he's easy. That's M-R-J-A-Y. You should know how to spell Washington because if you don't, then you dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I like Jay. Crazy. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, like, I, I'm Flash with Cicada. Like, speaking of Jay hating him, Jay hates... We talked about it on his one of his most recent Mad Time podcasts. Uh, Chris Klein playing Cicada on uh, <laughs> freaking Flash. He, he, he goes that's over funny. the top. There was and I'm and I'm like, bro, that's it's it's Oz from from American Pie. He's like, no, you ain't gonna do that to me. I'm like, but bro, it's Charlie from Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li. <laughs> he referenced like the worst Street Fighter. <laughs> The worst Street Fighter of the two. There's a worse. Yes. Don't get me wrong. I love Street Fighter, but you know the, 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 the one with Jean Claude Van Damme goes a little bit higher because he's Jean Claude Van, Van, Van Damme. Uh, but I'm 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 loving him as Cicada, and I'm loving uh, uh, Sherlock uh, Harrison No Harrison Harrison Wells. Now we have a yeah. Her- Sherlock Wells. It's great. He's an incredible character. Um, everything's been really, really good. Like my number one thing for all of the shows, for all the superhero shows, is uh, Mandy, Black Lightning. Mandy Rose, who is on your phone. Mandy Rose is on my phone. <laughs> uh, is Black Lightning? Yeah. Because on the most recent episode, uh, little little bit Jennifer comes in. She's you know they, they, we just uh, had some had some tragedy hit to her. I know you haven't watching, so I don't want to spoil. It's fine, it exactly you can say it. Happened. I'll forget. Uh. And so she comes up to dad and she's like, I want to stop Tobias. I want to go to fight with him. I don't care if that means get me a suit. Whatever it means, I want to go to war. And I'm just like, she's going to get the suit. She's going to get the suit. We're going to see She's going to get the suit. (laughs) And I am so hyped because she just has this mentality to her that she's like, that's it. I'm done being afraid of my powers. I'm done not knowing what to do with my powers. We're going to war and I'm going to step up. Yeah. And I'm loving that aspect of her character. That's cool. Yeah, but it took that push from Tobias mm-hmm. and, and what he did that caused her so much pain. Exactly. So for her to like, okay, I have these powers and now I see that I have to use them mm-hmm. to bring down people like that. Right. Exactly. And and so that's what I'm loving about it, man. It's Black Lightning this season. Like the first season I loved, like it started really strong and then tapered off to yeah. me. Mm-hmm. This season has been in incredible from start to finish that's not good. to me oh. really when they had the whole uh true blood vampire the the, the quick okay. vampire yeah. things yeah the vampire was like, stuff was dumb I was that like, fourth series arc what i mean yeah p- push it aside <laughs> yeah that was that was a little that okay i'll give you that good call. i i kind of blocked that out uh, <laughs> your mind was like we can't we can't remember this and it, it helps that i've that i've now met Cress williams like three or four times and he's just one of the coolest people on the planet. Oh, like he's just so damn him fun. Once. <laughs> well, I met him. I met him when I interviewed him at Comic Con. Yeah. And now I just met him doing the junket for Reign of the Supermen, which you can see my interview with him on uh, Cinelinks, Cinelinks yeah. on the YouTube channel. So. so did you? Did he remember you? I didn't ask if he did. I you should have asked. Really, yeah. You're like you know me, right? He he will now. Because he loved talking professional wrestling nice. with me and the Superman in the prof- in the Royal Rumble. That's cool. So that's cool. That was really cool. Uh, my negative as far as superhero shows go 
is uh, we finally introduced Bane on Gotham. Oh, Bane. Oh, uh, Bane. <laughs> and he just don't talk like this. Does it do not? No. How, how, how bad is it? It's so bad. Oh. It, it, is it worse than the movie? Okay. Because no, the, the, the movie Bane. I, I love, he loves I movie love Bane. Tom Hardy Bane. Are you I kidding think me? To, the, Dark Knight Rises is actually my favorite of the... Of the Dark Knight trilogy, okay. we don't. It's not. It's not. I don't think. Just, just move on. I don't think it's the best, (laughs) but it's it's the one I watch the most frequently. Is it because Heinz Ward returns a kickoff? (laughs) (laughs) And then he he turns around and just like, yo, what happened to my field, man? But I got that touchdown though. (laughs) Put the six on the clock. Put on the. the, uh, It's but he's not Bane yet. He's just the character that is gonna put the mask on. Okay. And it's played by Shane West. And. He's got a backstory where him and Gordon are old war buddies. Mm. Played by who? Shane West. I don't know who Shane West is. Uh, Shane West was in what's that? Uh, that uh, uh, the Mandy Moore movie, A Walk to Remember. Oh. Man. Yep the the, oh. the boyfriend in A Walk to Remember. I um, see him currently. But, but, and I but think Bane is supposed to be a Hispanic luchador. Well, he's Something. not. Isn't he? I mean, he's oh, a wrestler. Yeah, wrestler. The original, I think the original comic was. But I mean, have you seen Bane as a as a Hispanic luchador in any incarnation yet? Tom Hardy was definitely no, not no. a Hispanic luchador. Well, well, and that okay. yeah, little skinny yeah, guy from Batman and Robin was right. definitely but, not a Hispanic <laughs> luchador. But in the comics, on the video games, on the uh, like anything that you've had Bane in that hasn't been in a movie, he has been the Hispanic luchador. Uh, animated series, was he? I don't remember. Uh, I don't maybe remember. not that one, but like on the current animated yeah. stuff, he is. Yeah, so either way, but the fact that he has this, like, connection with Gordon, and it's just so, so bad. Okay. So, so bad. That's and and you guys know my love-hate relationship with Gotham. This is current hate. And right now, it is definitely currently disliking. Ugh. So, uh, I, I don't know. It's okay, know. it's the final season. I know, I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen when he officially becomes Bane. Oh, but right now, it is not good. I'm going to take so much serum. <laughs> and I good. was born in the dark. I'm going to take the serum from season one. <laughs> you know, I've, I've got this idea now that I'm like, I don't know if anyone did it on YouTube, but I feel like it would be a genius idea to like, you know, after Batman Rises or Dark Knight Rises, whenever, you know, Heinz Ward does that, you know, kickoff return for a touchdown and he looks back and everything's all destroyed. I would love it if like, then you take that clip and you like pan back out to like the sportscasters like first take style where it's just like, well, the touchdown doesn't count. <laughs> the touchdown does count. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's Skip Bayless and Stephen yeah. A. Yes. <laughs> back again. Yes. He is the greatest kickoff returner of all time. He outran a bomb in the touchdown count. That is not okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Keeping up with our trend, BC, what's your uh, top five markup moments? Top five mark. Why wow, we're doing it live? We're here. Here's the graphic. Is there a graphic? I don't know. Are we gonna do like a five, four, three, two, one thing? I have no idea. He's the editor. He just sure. number five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me pull them up here. All right, number five goes to Chicago PD this this week, man. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. They dealt. They dealt with. Uh, c- cop shooting black people, and it was the the main cop Kevin was undercover with a criminal, mm-hmm. and they end up getting pulled over ba- uh, while they're on their way to make a drug deal so that they can bust this major criminal, and they get pulled over by these racist ass cops, Ooh. and they almost shoot Kevin the cop, yeah, but they definitely shoot the the dude that they're setting up. For no reason at all. And it is straight, strictly set up. And it, it is a very powerful and strong episode. Ooh. And it was it was definitely one of the best episodes I've ever seen in Chicago PD. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 it got like and the way the dude Kevin, I don't remember, I don't know the actor's name, but he just plays it so strong. And he's so he's he, like he you feel every emotion he's going through he wears it all on his face and it was such a powerful performance loved this freaking episode awesome so numero cuatro cuatro cuatro, cuatro. 
Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly Williams on The Flash. Mm-hmm. Do you know who Kimberly I Williams don't. is? Uh, she is, you don't have to look it up because I'm going to tell you. Okay. Father of the Bride. The Bride. Oh, okay. uh, she is going to be a new love interest for Harrison Wells, for Sherlock Wells. By the way, if you if you look up Kimberly West, Kim Kardashian comes up. Uh, Kimberly Williams. Kimberly Williams. <laughs> uh, and so I am. I, I just, as soon as I saw her, I was like, I was like, oh. And then she went away pretty quickly. I was like, was that a bit part? Did they really just put the father of the, the the bride in a bit part? But then she comes back toward the end. And you're yeah. like, oh. Okay, she's going to be part of the story going forward. So just the fact that I see her, I get really excited nice. because I'm not going to lie to y'all, I love Father of the Bride. That's awesome. Like it's one it's of, a great one. It's, yeah. it's both of them, one yeah. and two. Yeah. So okay. number E C three. I saw a meme. That oh, had... EC one, EC two, and EC three. <laughs> That's a John, good one. John Cena, yes. the prototype, and yes. then John Cena, and then EC. <laughs> He posted it. Yeah, that was genius. If yeah. you're not following EC3 he's on Instagram, what are you doing? With your he's life? hilarious. He is, and he's, on Twitter. He's, he's really great. on Twitter. He really is. Uh, all right, my number three is Arrow 150. Yeah. Because, again, I, it started out like they were doing this like mockumentary on uh, vigilantes. And I'm like, is this what we're doing all episode? It's just going to be a mockumentary. <laughs> I hate those. Like, are you really doing episode 150 is a filler episode of you doing a, of us watching a mockument, a documentary, but halfway through it switches and they start doing like storyline along with it. And you see Mm -hmm. the documentary crew following them. So I'm like, okay, this was a really cool, uh, uh, MacGuffin to help push this story Mm -hmm. along here. And especially for 150, because you got to bring back people like Thea and, uh, uh, Roy Harper and Detective uh, the Dad. I forget his damn name. Oh, um, um, I know who you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he came Lance. back. Lance, yeah, Lance, Lance. Yeah, Lance. Yeah, Lance. Uh, Sarah Lance was back on there. You get to see some a lot of footage of Deathstroke on there. Oh, cool. So it was real. Uh, it was really cool to see all these characters kind of intertwined back in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have an interview with Diggle of him talking to like the press from season one, where he's like, "Look, I'm all over Queen's bodyguard. There's no way this kid is is doing some anything." St- vigilante is he's he's just a stupid little kid and then it cuts back to the day of the day and he was just like yeah that backfired on me <laughs> <laughs> so it was a very good plot device to move it forward it was just the first 15 minutes when i thought it was just gonna be that i was really disappointed mm. but as it went on it really did end up working out nice so all right number two comes from to us from the flash uh, there's a scene where Flash, Flash, and uh, uh, Elastic Man, not Elastic Man, um, God, his elongated, name, elongated man. They don't oh, have their powers because they're longer than name. I know. Did Rob Dibney, Dibney, whatever his name Ralph, is. Ralph Dibney. Ralph Dibney. Uh, they don't have their powers, and so they got to go in and stop these bad guys. And they've got these super gun things, and they're like, all right, they load them up, and it's like buddy cop. But then all of a sudden. Dracula by Rob Zombie starts playing. Oh my god. And it's just this awesome scene of them going in and taking everybody out while Dracula is playing. And I just started marking the F out, man. Cause like I'm not much of a metal fan thing, but Rob Zombie Dracula in his heyday, man, that stuff was so damn dope. That's cool. So it was a great scene to watch, man. It, it, when when you finally catch up, mm-hmm. that scene's gonna hit. This is gonna jog in your memory, and you're gonna go, "Oh shit, this is dope." That's cool. So all right, all right, Rob, can I get a drum roll? Number one. see the shirt a little bit more because it's going to go to Ronda Rousey for coming up to Becky Lynch in the back and cutting that promo after oh, that Lynch good. walked yeah, out. And then she's walking off and comes back and just goes, Advil and Ice, bitch. Yeah! I was oh. just like, yo! Yo! Okay! I see you, Advil and Ice, bitch! Get it! That really, that really needs to be a shirt. Like, Advil and Ice. 
I love that. Yeah, that was I'm awesome. marked out. That was the best that, was that she that has great. done. Just because she walks off, stops, walks back, and just add villain ice, bitch. Oh, oh, it's so good. So good. That was her best promo that she's done. <laughs> Outside of the whole thing where she's like, you know, you come out here doing a violin recital and you're like, what? Hold up, what? And you <laughs> see it, and you see it in Becky's face just, damn, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have much else to say to that. Um, and and you know, she's trying not to laugh and she's just, that was so good. Yeah. I'm just, okay. <laughs> that was good. So damn good. It's better than the cut off your cut off, cut off my hair and wash your feet. What? Hold on, <laughs> Rhonda. Hold on. Wait. What? <laughs> no one asked of this for you. Anyway, those are my top five mark out moments of the week. Y'all, let me know what did y'all what were your five favorite things of the week on television. Let us know. Hit us up on Twitter. BC, what you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Law & Order SVU, which I watched this last week. And it was a very interesting episode because it was all set in an actual court case, like in the court. And most of it took place in the waiting room where the detectives are waiting to get called to be on the stand. Oh, interesting. So it was kind of – and they all had different opinions of the case. And they all felt like like the girl who killed her husband was – like one of them was like, no, it was wrong because she shot her husband. And the other guy was like, yeah, but he was emotionally abusing her. Like, and like, he, he was, but he was also a cop. But the guys were like, well, but we knew him and he was a horrible human being. Yeah. So he deserved it. And so it was very, very interesting to see them. They, they, they all had different opinions and they were arguing with each other downstairs under the, uh, and then they'd be called up one, on, one by one to go be on court. And the girl that was on trial was uh, Foggy's little bae from Daredevil. Oh, okay. The blonde one? Uh, Amy R- R- Ruthberg, I think, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But but yeah, it was it was a very different episode of Law & Order. And it was mm-hmm. it, it really entertained me. So I really like it. It was kind of like 12 Angry Men almost. Nice. But yeah, very interesting. very interesting. I like that. All right, so I binge-watched uh, the first season of The Magicians, which uh, Matt has been telling me to watch forever. And I finally watched and it. It so was great. Good. But I'm not going to go through like every episode. There are some issues with the story, but that's Cares, something else. So My favorite episode is the one where they were going to go on like spring break. Yeah. And Elliot and Morgan, yeah, Morgan were trying to make gin, a special magical gin to take to make drinks on, on the trip. Yes. And they make this whole still and they cast their spells and all this stuff and they put the bottle in there and they make this gin they put in the bottle and they open it and then a gin DJI and a genie <laughs> pops yeah. up in the room and it's under Morgan's control I loved it uh, fantastic yeah I'm thinking man they're gonna go to this party they're gonna get wasted and nope boop. who's he <laughs> <laughs> but not only that um Elliot got involved with a guy named Mike during an episode, and Morgan was getting a little bit just because that took away her best friend, her best gay friend. And in her head, her thought was, I wish Mike would go back to where, where, he, where, he, where we met him and suck on some other knob. But she didn't know that other part. You just wanted him to go back. So when you see him, he's in front of a door. Sucking on a knob. Sucking on a knob. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So, yeah, that was great. Plus, um, Alice is cute. Alice, yeah. Alice is cool. <laughs> and what I'm excited for is, because you said you finished all season one, right? Mm-hmm. You're about to get Dark Alex, or Alice. And she is crazy. So you're going to really like Dark Alice. Okay. Yeah. The only, the only thing I didn't like was, I, we talked about it before, the characters are good. I like the characters, but there's a point where I just forgot what they were doing. Like, the whole thing with the Beast, I just yeah. forgot about that story. And then they ended like... Who's he? Oh, he's the bit. Yeah. Okay. It's a little. Right. It's a little <laughs> odd. You know, you kind of go on this weird adventure with every single one of them in these different timelines because, as you know, I mean, this is all like one big timeline that they're constantly redoing over and over again. Um. So it is interesting that you have to go through all that, but honestly, you can't really go and fight the beast because the beast is just going to flat out kill you at first. So, mm. it kind of made sense that you went in to understand and learn more about these characters. And every single season kind of does that, where it's like, you've got that main thing, but we'll get around to it, sort of thing. But unlike other shows where I hate that, this one, like, every episode is just really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, 
That's and, how and you you hated Elliot too at first, didn't you? Elliot, yeah, I, I thought Elliot was a piece of shit. But then yeah. once once they talked about it afterwards and and that episode and I, they had an episode like two episodes focusing on Elliot, I was like, ah, oh, Elliot's not so bad. Elliot's great. Yeah. I love Elliot because yeah. he was just kind of like an asshole to everybody. I mean, I thought he was he he was worse than Penny. Penny's bad, but he just hates Quentin. Yeah, well, Penny <laughs> hates Quentin like straight up wants to murder Quentin. So um, yeah, so. That's it for mm-hmm. us. Uh, we are done. BC, put yourself over. Find me on all social media at RealJackSBC, R-A-L-J-A-C-K-A-S-S-B-C, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, everything. Well, I don't really use Snapchat anymore. I don't know why I say that. But uh, also check out the MPX Network, network.mpxwrestling.com. Use the code JACKASS1, J-A-C-K-A, dollar sign, dollar sign, no, the number one to get your discount on there. It is what it is. goes up every single Thursday. Uh, the most recent episode... Has Michael Schaefer on it. We talk about the XFL and the fun stuff we're going to be doing. Uh, next week, I actually, I know what I am going to talk about. I'm going to be talking about the X-Men and the Fantastic Four coming into the MCU Ooh. and how I would personally like to see it. That'd be cool. So, uh, go home, going up on right before uh, the Elimination Chamber next week. Don't forget about that. And Jackass won the last Monday of every single month. The Jeebus Awards are coming! 22nd, they'll be up, they'll be here. Not looking forward to editing that. Have fun. Well, yeah. it's not live? It is. I think live. it's live. It, so why would you edit it? Because there's a lot of buttons to press in the backstage and stuff. Oh. Yeah. And I gotta keep certain people away from certain people. And they have so many celebrities, and they all have like, you guests and plus ones and all this other crap. It's hard. So. it's hard to manage. I wouldn't say edit, manage. Yeah. Probably. It's the worst. Yeah. Matt? Uh, yeah, so um, speaking of Snapchat, yeah, like a lot of people keep asking me, do you have a Snapchat? I'm like, why are you even still on it? Like, I don't know, I don't care. Uh, anyway, so you can uh, find I'm me. still on it so I can watch uh, Bad ba- Baby's uh, Snapchat series. That's a, that's a thing? Yeah, she's she has her own series on Snapchat now that Snapchat put money into. They had a lot of views, apparently. Mm. Yeah, uh, they could, a lot. Yeah, like she like is mil- killing Millions. It. It's insane. <laughs> like, this girl is a freaking genius. I don't I don't care what anybody says. Like, power to her, man. All right, interesting. Uh, okay, yeah, you can find me on all social media at MoveTheJoystick. Don't forget to check out Sinlinks.com. We've doing a, been doing a lot of streams lately. Uh, we did a Division 2 stream. We've done Apex Legends streams. And the new- uh, no one has played fucking Division after that. Except I'm, for me. Yeah, well, the, the whole, like, the being kicked off kind of is not fun. Um, yeah, and we're also going to be doing a bunch of Anthem streams because that comes out in two weeks. So, yeah, don't forget to check out all of that. And I'm Rob. You can find me on Channel Control TV on Instagram and YouTube and Channel Control on Twitter. And if you want to find me on Snapchat, you can't because of my Instagram. So go to Instagram at Channel Control TV. Thank you very much. This has been our show. Thank you guys, BC, for showing up. Uh, that I don't know where you're going to in the world. Uh, Maybe, next, try and try and find Carmen San Diego for us. <laughs> next official trip, I believe, is Austin oh. for South by Southwest. Cool. So mm, that's, that's gonna be fun. is that next week? No. It's not so you can March. be here next week. Uh, I mean, let's like let's uh, peer next. pressure. You're gonna be here next week, right? We'll find out. Down below, tell us who want him here next week, and he'll be here. We'll make sure he's here. We'll find out. All right. See you later, folks. Thanks for watching.